This is Adam Watson. And Robert Diaz. You're listening to the Dark Slinger Mafia podcast. Yes, it's been a few weeks since we recorded. It has. So oh, last no, week like I, two, uh, wasn't it? I ran interviews that I recorded at the I Like Comic Con last week. An interview with Floyd Sumner and one with Lucas Kettner. I don't know who those people are. I think you told me about Lucas. Both are friends of mine. Lucas is an exceptionally talented artist. Yeah, he um, got picked up by Robert Kirkman. Kirkman's company, yeah. He actually just did a new project for him called Kill the Minotaur, which is primarily what we were talking about on the last podcast. Hmm. So, anyhow, just finished up one show, and have another show coming up this next weekend. Where, where are you setting up this next weekend? Going to be at the Hillsboro Library for Comic Fest 2018. It's the first year they're doing this. Would Would you care to say the dates for people? The dates listening? are. Can you make out that calendar over there? February 24th and 25th. Yes. Yes. <laughs> if you knew that already, why didn't you just say it? Well, it's, it's your show. <laughs> I'm just along for the ride. You're my co-host, though. So. Well, go back to the last show. How how did okay. that one go? The last show was horrible. It wasn't that there was a lack of people interested in my properties. It was that there was a lack of people there, period. So I've seen people posting online about what a great show it was, and I have to ask what they consider to be a great show because there were not enough people there even have the opportunity to even remotely earn the money back on the table. Our booth. Just a ghost town? Yeah. I might have made more money had I taken like long boxes to sling, but on the other hand, it's very possible I wouldn't have, and considering the lack of people there, all I might have done was hurt my back worse from bringing them in. Hmm. So, that yeah. That makes you sound old. Yeah. Yeah, it does. But yeah, it was just total. You didn't take any long town. boxes? No. Oh, just slinging your own stuff? Yeah, I was just looking as just doing a Dark Slinger show because the way that the show was kind of sold, I thought that's what, you know, would be good there. But I didn't feel like the show was what it was sold as. It seemed like they were trying to make this huge event out of it, and they didn't manage to get, like, hardly anybody through the doors. That's shitty. Yeah, I'd be surprised if there was over 650 people there. They, there has been some claims, and I don't know if it's by the people who are actually running the con or not, that there were 3,000 people there, and there was absolutely no way, no way possible. What was the size of the venue? It was a pretty big venue. It was like... Uh, Compared the, to Crypticon, that was probably my biggest show. Bigger than Crypticon. The venue, uh, it was an open floor plan, so it wasn't multi-buildings, or multi-rooms like Crypticon is. It was bigger than that. I would say that the size of the space it was in was comparable with the basement at the Memorial Coliseum, if you've ever been to a show there. No, I've only been on the ground level. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, unless you that's pretty. That sounds pretty big. It it was. It was a big space. I mean, there were uh, 200 vendors set up. There was just nobody. Nobody came. That sounds boring. It, there weren't even really that many cosplayers there. It sounded way better when you talked about it before you went. Yeah, well, it seemed like it was going to be a really good show, and I have no clue what went wrong. I think part of it was they were charging too much for what it was. What was the ticket price? You know, I'm not entirely positive. I know it was 15 plus, so mm. it was at least 15, and it might have, in fact, been more than that. Too much, whatever it was. Because, you know, you're talking about a show in Ridgefield. Too far so, for me to go. Yeah. I should have looked more at that fact. You know, it's like, it's not a Portland show. It's outside of, you know. So, kind of got to use the same guidelines for doing a show in an area like that as I should when I'm doing a show in Salem. So, you know, I won't do a sh- Salem show that's over 100 bucks. Just not going to do it. Because there's not enough. They don't draw enough. Yeah, there's not going to be a big enough draw. There's not Mm -hmm. enough people who want to go to a show in Salem, you know? But I would say that the Cherry City show in Salem probably has four to five times the amount of people at it than this one. (laughs) That's shitty. Yeah. Waste of time. Waste of money. Yeah. Yeah. It was a show that I was just looking at getting promotional material out for the Ghost Assassin Kickstarter app. And 
couldn't even really accomplish that. I mean, I got a few into people's hands, but not nearly enough. Can't do it if the people aren't there. No, exactly. It wasn't for lack of people who were there stopping by the booth. It was just, you know, you kind of figure when you're doing shows like these, you're going to be able to sell something to what, like one out of every 10 people who stop by your booth. And I would say that held about true because I you sold got to three people. people, three people. And uh, I would say there was about 30 people who stopped by the booth of the, you know, and we were in the very, very backside. So we didn't even get the full traffic that you got. And here's the really shitty part. So like I paid for the exhibitor booth because when you do a show, you think you're paying for an exhibitor booth, you're paying for premium placement, right? And the way they had it laid out, Artist Alley took up the whole front area of the room. And then they put exhibitor booths way in the back corner. So it's like, why did I pay more than I would have for Artist Alley? Yeah, Artist that's, Alley that's should not be the setup. premium placement that exhibitor booths are. Yeah, the, the main part of it should be yeah, right there when you come in. Like right. That. And then they had Artist Alley tables like flanking the exhibitor booths on the outside. It felt really bad for like four of the people there because there was just this little road that had four tables in it that was in the very back left corner that were facing a wall and like nothing was over by those people. So there's like no traffic where they were. An idiotic setup that they did. It was. It was a hor- horribly set up show. And I did not consider it to be well ran. It seemed like it was extremely poorly ran. At no point in time did the con runners ever stop by and ask how the show was going or anything like that. And you always know when show runners don't think they're putting on a good show when they don't even stop by and ask you how it's going. That was a good thing about Crypticon. Is Crypticon, there were they always people. stop by, even that, if you got bald, negative that things That tall, say. bald dude, he was mm-hmm. always talking to people. Oh, yeah. He, uh, he makes sure... It's a good show for everybody all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Crypticon's a lot better ran show, though. Yes. So Definitely worth going <laughs> up there for. Uh-huh. This, on the other hand, was just, you know... Yeah, they have put out things about doing year two. I will not be returning for year two. No way. Yeah, it doesn't sound worth it. No. I would be amazed if they got even half of the vendors that were there to show up for a second year. If they want to get people... Or if they want to get a full show, they better start selling tables for it now. The Crypticon table's already gone? Oh, Crypticon tables went like lightning quick this year. Mm, it's getting real popular. Yeah, I'm gonna, I need to still get on the wait list. I've been meaning to do that over the past couple of days, but I've been so busy trying to get backers on the Ghost Assassin Kickstarter that I haven't had any time to. Yeah. More important right now, more pressing yes, matter. Yes, it is. <laughs> but yeah, I really want to be a Crypticon. It's a good show. Yeah. Definitely worth it. Yeah. Especially if it's getting this big. Yeah, they have it in a new location now, too. Further up? I don't think it's really that far away. I think it's just a, b- a bigger, bigger venue. Yeah. The other location was pretty good, wherever mm-hmm. that was. I like the other location. I haven't been to the new location yet. So I have no idea how that is. I haven't been there in years. But I think it's still by the Seattle airport. Yeah, it's still I think still it's still in the bad. same area. Still a few hours away. Yeah, it started out in uh, Everett, was where it was originally held, which is like on the other side of Seattle. Oh, <laughs> jeez. And I heard a lot more mixed stuff about it when it was over there. After they moved it like the airport side. Seemed like it... Uh, no one wants to go to the north side. <laughs> Shitty area. <laughs> Not that you've ever been there. No, just I, assuming. I have. If you're going to go that far, just go to Canada. <laughs> it's only a couple hours away, I think. Yeah, not too far, actually. <laughs> yeah. It's like six hours for us. Yeah, something like that. Bellingham. Yeah, it's about six hours. Uh, on to Ghost Assassin. Where are you at with that? Where am I at funding wise? Entirely. Top to bottom. Still need like, I think, 1700, 1600, something like that. I'm having a hard time remembering because I just had a backer at 135 back out. Not entirely sure why, but 
dropped pledges is just something that happens during Kickstarters. Yeah, there's, there's no way around I that. really, really wish, though, that Kickstarter would institute something like eBay has. You know, eBay, you can cancel orders, but you have to put a thing in stating why, right? I really wish when somebody canceled a pledge on Kickstarter, they had to say why. And okay, yeah, we're currently at 2,161 of 3,814. So about $1,700 off. Yeah, about $1,700 and three days to go. So it's going to be tight. Yes. It was trending real well there for a, for a while. And yeah. That's, that's, a good, that's a good amount to make it to. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm pretty proud of that amount, but I really need this to succeed. <laughs> it's always better when something succeeds. Right. <laughs> but yeah, we made it quite far, and so I'm going to keep pushing, and uh, I think it's actually closer to four days left because that doesn't go down to the hours until you get to the last two days, but it Thursday, ends on Thursday. Thursday, February 22nd at 10, 11 a.m. Yeah. Pacific time. Yeah, I wish I wouldn't have had it end during the AM. I wish I would have had it end in the evening for some reason. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? I don't know. But in any case, I'm just going to keep plugging, keep pushing, keep trying to get some new backers. Would have been a lot better if uh, that show wasn't so shitty. Yeah, and and to top it off, stuff. I came back with a pretty bad flu. Gross, so. and I'm sitting here two feet from you. And you oh, just I'm now, fine now. You just now say this. That cost me like two days worth of promotion too. I didn't get my flu shot. So in total, don't worry about it. I don't have it anymore. So in total, it was like four days worth of a uh, loss of promotion with the con and the flu. Uh, yeah. That's gnarly. Yeah. Yeah, it was. But I see you put on your new, um, what do you call them, incentives. Yes, I had three new incentives. So there's a $10 digital pack that gets Ghost Assassin number one, Chronicles Von Helsing issues number one, two, three, four, and five, and the Sally special from Chronicles Von Helsing. Who will save the world and Astro Zombies, Vampires, and Donuts. So for 10 bucks, you get all that. I had uh, two backers who increased their pledges to $10 when I added that, so that's pretty nice. Oh, nice. Um, and then I added a $250 level that gets you all the previous rewards, so the metal print, the t-shirt, the three limited raw editions, Ghost Assassin number one, and you get a original art page from Charles Carvalho from the Ghost Assassin Prelude story, and then a $350 tier where you get all that minus the Carvalho page, you don't get that, uh, but you get the cover artwork from issue number four by Joel Kotajar. So Cover artwork's cooler. Yeah. Cover artwork is pretty cool. And that uh, that particular cover is awesome. So I'm hoping somebody takes us up on those. Somebody might snatch it up. You got three days. Yeah, we do. Plenty of time. Three days to get drawn in as a ghost. Three days to get drawn in as a living human. Three days for original art. Metal prints. Ghost assassin number one. <laughs> The raw editions. <laughs> so many incentives. So many. <laughs> Just, I, I'd recommend the highest one. The highest tier. That one's the best. I would recommend $1,000 past the highest tier. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you can get your own comic about you. <laughs> your own special issue. <laughs> Where you can be the living person and the person who gets killed. <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, the ghost afterwards. <laughs> that's a good $1,000 deal. Yeah. No, it's a good idea. <laughs> Hell, that's a good $500 deal. That would be a good $500 deal. Oh, man. <laughs> Put it in there. <laughs> what are you doing at this next con? The, what, what, your your library con? Yep, the Comic Fest in Hillsboro. That, yeah, that one. What do you mean, what am I doing there? What are you doing there? You mean, what am I selling? What sort of things are you doing there? Oh, well, there's. I'm going to be on two panels, and I'm going to be selling Dark Slinger comics. Wow, that sounds super exciting. <laughs> what the hell are your panels? <laughs> One of the panels is about digital comics, 
And the other one is uh, diversity and representation in comics and do you belong in comics? Do you belong in comics and yeah. diversity? Yeah, see, at I first know. I skipped over that one when I was looking at all the different uh, all the different panel names, right? But then I thought, you know what? I get told like every time I do a show that I don't look like I'm a comic creator. So I'm interested in talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you would bring a good perspective on that. Right? <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not entirely positive uh, what all is going to be covered in there. They're just kind of uh, topics that are a place to start talking and then see where you go from there. So that's the way panels normally work anyhow. I would think so. And then maybe people ask questions. Uh-huh. I don't know. I've never watched it. Well, no, I guess I have watched panels before on the internet. Yeah, I've participated in some, and I've watched many online. So hmm. this other one, digital comics. What is what is that supposed to be? Um, you like, know, about selling sit? your comics digitally, about how to prepare files, that kind of stuff. Oh, some of the panels are geared, from what I can gather, towards people who might be aspiring creators. I thought it might be about how you feel about digital comics well there's probably going to be an aspect of that that just naturally comes up yeah, but some people don't i've like been it. selling digital comics since the day i started selling comics so i have a pretty good perspective on that i find hmm. i i just prefer not to read digitally like that i prefer not to read anything digitally if i don't have to yeah and some of them don't even don't seem any cheaper if you get them digitally so a lot of times they're not like, what the hell's the point you can get a paperback of a book on sale on amazon for like 30 percent off or you can buy it digitally at the same price the, the cover price is like 7.99 yeah why why would you want to do that why do you want something digitally that, that you... costs the exact same amount yeah yeah not me that's why when i price my comics you know digitally i do like 99 cents to a dollar 99 traditionally except for like with who will save the world because it's a, a bigger graphic novel i do that one at three bucks but i also have sales on it fairly frequently to make it like a buck fifty to two bucks you know part of the reason for that is because i personally know what i would pay for a digital you know and like it seems ridiculous to me to charge the same price that it is cover wise yeah, I, I when don't, it's a printed good, I find the same problem with things like video games. Why would I want to pay sixty bucks? Yeah, when I can't resell that, right? If I get tired of it, or downloading movies it. through Vudu, it costs you like twenty bucks a piece. Yeah, yeah, that's it's ridiculous. like I could go to the store and pick up that DVD for like six bucks right now. It's like half the movies they have on there are old. <laughs> Get it in the bin at Walmart, right? <laughs> five movies for five bucks, right? All on one disc. Yeah, you can. You can get a lot of those, actually. <laughs> those are the best horror movies. <laughs> they do actually put some pretty good stuff out that way. No, they don't. They're all, yes, they do. They're all awful. No, they had Prophecy on one of those $5 deals. Okay. I love Prophecy. Have you never seen it? No. It's Christopher Walken. It's like Fallen Angels. He's Gabriel. And uh, Casey Jones from the first Ninja Turtles movie plays in it. Oh, that guy. Yeah, he's a preacher who... Uh, who's having visions of all these awful things that angels are doing, and he ends up leaving the faith. And it's all about, like, you know, the angels are trying to kickstart the end of the world, and they got to stop him. Christopher Walken's awesome in it. And the angels kill each other by taking their fingers and poking them through each other's eyeballs. It's the so, only way an angel can kill another angel. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Vigo Mortensen plays in as a their, devil. It's their weak spot. Oh, that that makes me interested in it. I like yeah. that. Yeah, and he looks gnarly. And like, uh, if I remember right, his gums are black. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty nasty looking in it. <laughs> that makes it sound worth watching. But I've seen plenty of bad horror movies. Almost all of them come in those packs. Right. Yeah, I think that I bought like five of the Halloween movies. In one of those packs, and it had the, uh, the, um, what's his name, Ant Man, Paul, uh, Paul Rudd. Yeah, it had Paul Rudd, directed, written, starred in, Halloween six six six. You know, <laughs> sounds I think so he did awful. that when he was like nineteen. <laughs> He's good now, but right for that, I don't think so. 
but it had like Halloween 4, 5, Resurrection, and H2O on it. Which I love all those movies. I don't care if you love them or not. <laughs> I haven't seen all those movies. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Can't say I wanted to. <laughs> well, I love Halloween. And I love the Prophecy movies. <laughs> yeah. I like the first new Halloween, but I didn't like the second one. I don't like the second one either. Yeah. Rob Zombie kind of fucks up his films, I think. Yeah. He he has a tendency to do that with quite a few of them, actually. Yeah, the second one could have really done without having his wife shoehorned into it every ten seconds. Oh. And all the psychological bullshit they try to toss into that movie. Pretty much every movie that he does doesn't need to have his wife. Yeah, well, she was fine as Michael Myers' mother in the first movie. Oh, well, yeah. But the second one, her part was so needless. That Lords of Salem movie, or Witches, is whatever it was called. Something of Salem. I actually enjoyed that movie. You know, I didn't really know what was going on in that movie. That's and then, fair. And then by the end of it, because I had suggested it to my friends, because right. I saw Rob Zombie and Horror, and then they were like, dude, what the fuck did you just make us watch? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. Okay, Lords of Salem, to me, seemed like an old-fashioned, like, 70s horror movie. It did have that feel. And I enjoyed it for that reason. Like, it very much reminded me of watching, like, an old grindhouse type, you know, 70s. Mm. You know. Still. <laughs> doesn't do it for me. Yeah. I can get that. I can get that. I enjoyed it, though. Well, I guess back to other horror things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you say back to other horror things, me? Yeah. <laughs> you write horror comics. <laughs> So, Fair enough. Some of my comics are horror. Yes. Well, I don't know. I guess maybe not all of them are. No. El Bovine Morte is not. Ghost Assassin has horror elements, but it's definitely not a horror comic. Yeah, but I, people would, I feel like people would just kind of lump it together. Just because it has ghosts in it? Yeah. Meh. Meh. I don't know. There's not really that much about it that would make it that way, I don't think, but... Yeah, but I feel like if they see your stuff sitting on a table, and then mm. they, they'll see Chronicles, and they'll see the big exploded zombie head. <laughs> From who will save the and world. And then, after that, they'll see Ghost Assassin, and they'll just, just be like, eh, this is horror. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm not going to say you're wrong. And then they'll see El Bovine Marte, and they'll be like, huh, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of weird whore. <laughs> Some kind of weird, weird cow going, cow thing going on over here, man. I don't know what this is. And that's how you get a sale. It's true. That is true. What's the news with him, anyways? With Elbow Vine Morte? Yeah. Just finished the Elbow Vine Morte Ghost Assassin four pager, and also ran a Valentine's Day image last week. This week is going to be the launch of issue number four. So the first page from issue number four is going to be posted. Ooh. Yeah. That's going to be funny. Yeah. It'll be funny, but this is also the actual storyline. So this isn't finally, just a joke. You know? Finally getting back <laughs> to the storyline. Yeah. I do have another idea, though, for a lame mime uh, commercial. So, <laughs> I'm going to hold off on that until the next issue's done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that actually, that that's a pretty funny idea, though, in between issue releases. Yeah, do a commercials. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to think of a way to space that for a while now. And I think the commercials actually do work pretty well for that. <laughs> Maybe like a let's all go to the lobby sort of thing. <laughs> Yeah, I might need to have, like, an image made up that specifically so that, you know, the break is now here for the four-page commercial that Le Mime's going to do, or seven-page, or whatever. Like the thing that pops up on the TV and goes, boop, and, yeah. <laughs> and you know that it's a, it's a test. Right. <laughs> I like that idea. Yeah, it is a good idea. Well, there you go. <laughs> Whole new market. <laughs> Commercials. Pretty soon you'll be on TV. Now TV's dead. Internet. Netflix. Technically, I think Netflix is something that you still watch on TV. The broadcast is not TV, right? Television is the device itself. No, I watch it on my phone. Oh, okay. Well, alright. That's fair. 
but I think there's still an awful lot of people who have televisions. Uh, <laughs> still internet. Still internet. <laughs> I forget what else we were talking about. We were talking about El Bovine Marte returning, so it makes sense that you got sidetracked and yeah. lost your attention span. Yeah, it's just what he got in there. Yeah, that's, that's what true. He does. But anyway, yeah. I had a pretty interesting comment on one of the posts for the Ghost Assassin Kickstarter. What was that? This guy commented and said, Tell them that they need to make this into an anime. I love it. I'd back if I had money. Now, you have I, my support in spirit. I love that. Hey, support in spirit's great. I mean, like, you know, he might have money at some point. Yeah. And he's, you know, more than welcome. But uh, I don't know who them are. <laughs> like, he. He commented on that on the Dark Slinger post for it. <laughs> so, tell them. I was really confused by him. Like, uh, you are telling them. I'm them, sir. <laughs> we are them. But I was really confused as to why he was saying make it into an anime. I guess he likes the idea of it. He really loves anime. I guess that could be. That very well could be. I can't imagine, though, that Ghost Assassin would make an overly good anime. I think there are properties of mine that might translate really well to anime. I could actually see Chronicles of Von Helsing translating just fine to anime, even though it wouldn't be my first choice. I could see it working. But well, There's a few Van Helsing animes out there right now that people love. Well, I mean my. Yeah, I'm just saying it works. Specifically. Yeah. But with uh, with Ghost Assassin, I, just, I don't really see that working as an anime. I think you'd have to change the story a little bit, but the idea of it, I think, could work. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. If it was going to be animated, I'd prefer to actually just see it in a traditional animation style. Could be a badass adult cartoon. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Like the old Spawn cartoon. Something of that nature. I could definitely deal with that. There was actually a company that hit me up when I only had Prelude out. They wanted to turn it into like a motion comic cartoon. Motion comic cartoons? Yeah, so it was like beyond motion comic and not quite a cartoon. Mm, I don't get it. Example? Okay, so they actually take the static images and add movement to them. So using programs like After Effects and stuff, they can actually make the arms look like they're moving and do stuff like that. And uh, so it's like... I think if you looked at it, you would consider it cheap animation. You don't really then, look at it and think comic, to be honest. Then what the hell is the point of it? Just... Well, there is a point in it if you're looking to have something cheaply animated. I mean, it's still expensive to do, but it's, uh, it's a lot cheaper than real animation, you know? Seems like if you're trying to make an animated music video, that's what you do. Yeah, something like that. But these guys did some amazing work. I mean, their motion comics were insanely cool, but... A part of their deal, they wanted to become the master licensors for anyone they made a motion comic for. No. <laughs> yeah, that shit doesn't, doesn't fly with you. <laughs> yeah, no. It's like, I'm going to hand over all of my licensing rights to you. I don't even know if you've ever even participated in the licensing deal. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> mm, unless you're entirely selling it for a lot of money to someone. Right. What the hell's the point in giving up everything? Yeah, there's not. I wouldn't want to give up all of it. No, and it's not like they were able to put it on any new or on uh, any networks or anything like that. Because I know Sci-Fi for a while at least was doing motion comics. It was like a half hour where they did motion comics. I don't know if they still are or not. Mm, I don't know. I don't watch it much, but I don't think so. I don't even remember seeing something like that. Yeah, it was like on Sundays at like eleven o'clock at night, something mm. like that. <laughs> Got to fill in the gaps. Yeah, I don't think it was exactly a prime time. <laughs> but, you know, if I ever did uh, one of my series animated, I think it'd be cool to use motion comic elements and then do, like, you know, animated in. Because, like, the Max kind of did it like that, where they would have, like, close-up on the actual comic panel and then do kind of, like, effects to make it look like it was animated and then all of a sudden it'd be the real, like, animated cartoon look. For 10 minutes or whatever, you know. And that was actually pretty cool mm. like that. 
It sounds like something. It'd have that would to be work. the right property to do it, though. If it's short little things, because it doesn't sound like it'd be very long. No. It it doesn't sound like something that would really do well for one of your comics, unless it's something like El Bovain Merte, where his stories are small. Right. Especially for his... So you're his... specifically talking like the El Bovain Merte commercials. Yeah, anything that he yeah. does, I feel, would work well for that. But any of these other things, you, I, I'd want to see something longer for right. the story. Yeah. I actually would not be the least bit opposed, though, in doing an After Effects uh, motion comic of the El Bovine Marte commercial. <laughs> that would be really funny. <laughs> yeah. Do they do they get all like the sound effects and stuff, or is it just like balloons? You can add in sound effects. I've seen them done both ways. I've seen motion comics that have actual like voiceover actors. Um, some of them, pretty high end voiceover actors. And then I've seen some of them where it's like the balloons and then the letters will appear in the balloons. And then I've seen some of them where it's just like uh, the words are there to read the entire time. And then I've seen some of them where it's like uh, a combo of the two. They'll have the dialogue up there, but they'll also have a voiceover actor telling you what the dialogue says. <laughs> I feel like at some point in my life I would have had to have seen these. I just you would don't think so. I think actually... Uh, those that I liked the best were used for I Am Legend when that was coming out. They did like, uh, they did motion comics, um, that they released prior to the release of that, that were little short stories of people dying off around the world Hmm. from the super virus that kills everybody in that. I don't think I saw that. They were really good. They were super well done. Um, but... I like the idea of that story. That was forever ago, you know. That seems like so long ago. Was yeah, like you can see those on the DVD. Two thousand four, two thousand six, something know. like that. And that one had one of the best Easter eggs of all time for something that wasn't quite there yet. Because you know, when he's driving his Mustang through Times Square, there's a movie billboard that has the Batman Superman emblem on it. Oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> yeah, because at the time they were just rumors of a Batman Superman movie. It was something that they kept trying to get off the ground. And so they'd stuck it in that, I think, to drum up like kind of interest in your brain, you know, and seeing Batman and Superman together. Hmm. And then when they did it, it was awful, but still. <laughs> I never watched it. <laughs> oh, God, don't. <laughs> I missed out on a lot of those things. I want to. I want DC to, to make good movies, but I just they don't. Yeah, I prefer them to Marvel, but I just don't ever see anything good from them. <sighs> I'm hoping the Shazam movie is going to be good. I like The Rock, so I like the idea of him playing Black Adam. Shazam is that is that the one with like the the kids? Yeah, become him. Well, it's one kid in the comic. Oh, so in Flashpoint, it's like seven kids. Okay, then that's, but, that's what yeah, I call Yeah, his, his name's actually Captain Marvel. Yeah. But his word that he shouts in order to become Captain Marvel is Shazam. And uh, it's like this whole legal thing where it used to he used to be a Fawcett character and then he became a DC character. And somewhere in between there, like Marvel had been publishing a character called Captain Marvel, so DC couldn't put Captain Marvel on the cover. So they had to put the power of Shazam, and then people just started calling him Shazam. So, <laughs> hmm. call something the wrong thing long enough. Yeah, basically. And everyone mm-hmm. will think it's right. Yeah. Yeah. And fun fact Elvis took his look from Captain Marvel Jr. Hmm. I had no idea. Yep. He's a huge fan of the character. I'll have to... And the little mini KP war, all that, right down to the, uh, is it TCB on his necklace? Tender, I, or is it Tender Love and Care? It might be TLC. Anyway, he had no like idea. that lightning bolt necklace. My you girlfriend know, could probably tell you. The lightning bolt is Captain Marvel Jr. as well. Oh. So we're just full of fun facts on the podcast tonight. Let's <laughs> just call ourselves Fun Fact Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What would it take, like, if if someone wanted to make your stuff into something, mm-hmm. would you give up your control of it? You mean it license it? Sure. I don't really well, know what I've, all Well, I've it licensed takes. out one thing already. I licensed the Who Will Save the World graphic novel to an Italian publisher called Bookmakers uh, to do an Italian edition of that. Already have one licensing deal 
under the belt, so to speak, I would absolutely be willing to license out my properties for the correct thing. So, like, you know, when I was a kid and I was hard, hardcore X-Men fan, the more popular the X-Men got, the less I wanted to collect them. <laughs> because, you know, it's like, oh, I want all the comics and, you know, the action figures. Keep them in the package, blah, 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 right? Trading cards, sure, why not? But then when they started putting Wolverine on bowling balls... You don't, you don't want to see it I don't everywhere. I fucking care about Wolverine being on a Brunswick ball. I don't want to collect that. I don't like that. I think that's stupid. So, like, you it's know... It's the money grabs that they go for. Yeah. Nowadays, when you walk through a Target or Walmart or whatever, you see Batman and Superman and X-Men and Spider-Man on everything, right? And, uh... Maybe they're still not as bad as Hello Kitty. I think Hello Kitty's still far more licensed than any of the DC and Marvel properties. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah, but uh, it's I it's a money grab. It's exactly that, which if you're a big corporation, I guess that's what it's all about. But I'm not a big corporation, so I have no interest in just licensing wholesale like that. But uh, early on, when El Bovine Muerte was... Let's see, I think one issue in, maybe we had just start, got to start on the second issue. I don't remember exactly. Somebody wanted to go far enough back in my Facebook timeline, they could find it though. <laughs> You'd have to go, like, clitter back to the beginning. <laughs> El Bovine Muerte was about that. I think Chronicles, I had maybe two issues out, maybe just one. Um, there was a company that had got a hold of me who was looking to use our properties on adult footy pajamas that they were making. Hmm, that's that's odd. Right? And they had these adult footy pajamas. And so the reason I say you could find it on Facebook is because I took to Facebook and MySpace at the time. And it was just like, hey, you know, if uh, if I license this out to this company, would anyone actually want to see these, right? And I was very shocked by how many people said that they would want them, right? A few people said yes, but only if they had uh, butt flaps in them. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'd be willing to elbow find Muerte for sure. <laughs> he would work. Right. I was like, Chronicles, Ghost Assassin, maybe, you know, what type of deal would you be offering me? Well, I didn't like the deal that the company offered, so I passed on that. But... I probably, even though footy pajamas would have been a weird one, I felt that if they did it right, it could have worked for El Bovine Marte. I think so. But, you know, I'd definitely be interested in, like, action figures and stuff like that if they were done correctly. I don't want stuff just turned out just looking like shit, you know? I think you don't quality want is very ball. important. I no. No, and, you know, you look at, like, Spawn, for instance. We were talking about Spawn earlier, you know, like... He's appeared on a lot of different things, right? But I don't think very much of it could have negatively impacted the franchise because for the most part, Todd McFarlane's produced more action figures of Spawn than, like, Jesus. There have to be just as many of him as there are of Wolverine. Probably not quite as many as there is of Batman, you know? But there's tons of Spawn figures, and they're all so well sculpted and so well done that, you know, it doesn't devalue the franchise maybe some of the stuff he did earlier on was kind of hokey like you know when he did the spawn mobile <laughs> i don't recall i don't even know if you were alive who knows but it I was like it was like this drag race car that kind of looked like it was a mad max style you know like uh car so but you know you could fit your full-size spawn figure and it was pretty goofy but for the most part you know there's there's only been really cool, super articulated, well-sculpted figures made for that, you know. And uh, and you've seen Spawn on a lot of different things, but you don't see it on anything that doesn't fit the franchise, you know. And that's more of what I have an interest in doing. Yes, I would license out my properties, but I'm protective over what they could be licensed to. Hmm. It's a good answer. Step to Elbow Boy Marte. He can go on almost anything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, I may not want as serious of stuff for him to go on. 
it might have to be of a goofier variety. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I would love, love, love if someone licensed El Bovine Muerte out to uh, put Le Mime or Muerte on a package of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> Even if it's just like some local cheese maker that just does it as like a one-time joke. I think that'd be fantastic. <laughs> Doesn't sound impossible to get. No, I would also love to have a lame mine branded wine. Well, these are popular things that are made around here. That's true. That is true. You need to get in touch with a cheese producer. A cheese producer. You can make your own cheese. No, well, you can. I think you gotta pass some sort of standards or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Or maybe just pasteurize. I don't know. I don't know. I could probably get in touch with somebody though. Just have him make up something that's a joke. <laughs> Would he be a stinky cheese? I kind of think that Morte's cheese would have to be a little stinky. Because it's supposed to be like super flavorful, right? And isn't that kind of the whole thing is like the more flavorful cheese is, the stronger the scent is? Uh, I, I think it kind of depends on the flavor. But yeah. I don't know. I'm not a cheese snob. so <laughs> I do love me some cheese. <laughs> That's one good thing about doing this uh, comic is like since it's a brand new type of cheese, I never had to actually study up on cheese. <laughs> Didn't even know a single thing. I know cheddar. <laughs> it just squirts right out of the cow, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's it where you comes get cheese out. whiz from. <laughs> it comes out in whatever shape they're showing Marte. So if they're showing her like cheese singles... It'll come out and then congeal into a cheese single. Yeah. <laughs> if they want it to come out as like nacho cheese, they can do that. <laughs> and I don't even know why, what I was thinking when I wrote that part. It was just like, huh. You know, I don't want to go through all the time of having them have to process it. I'd rather she just, <laughs> just make it on the spot. <laughs> just shoots out and like just however you want it. But like the first time the milk or it comes out as this giant perfectly shaped cheese wheel. <laughs> <laughs> In the first page, uh the, the cheese was on, Brian Janchez uh colored it with the cheese like glowing gold. So I have, like, all this gold glowing effects going on Le Mime and everyone who's around it. <laughs> I might have to bring back the glowing cheese at some point. <laughs> Special edition. Right. Limited edition cheese. Moving on from your uh, your cheese idea. Because <laughs> that that's fantastic. I'll buy... <laughs> I'll buy more day cheese. <laughs> what, you, what Did you see of... the Le Mime balloon animal, by the way? Sorry to cut you off. Oh, I don't... No, I didn't... Okay, after this over, if he still has any air in him, remind me to show you. But uh, <laughs> Elias at the con uh, found this guy that was making balloon animals. And uh, <laughs> he wanted to see a lay mime balloon figure made, like, super, super bad. So he went over and took the comic to the guy, and uh, he ended up making one. <laughs> I love the cheese. You need to do it. Even if it's just, like, sticking it on there. A uh, sticker. That'd be funny. Yeah, I think it'd be funny too. <laughs> Next, lay mime wine glasses, cause he's fancy. He drink he drink really cheap box wine now. <laughs> <laughs> no, he drinks bottled wine. <laughs> well, <laughs> France is equivalent of box wine. Okay. Okay. Cheap bottles. All right. <laughs> Just like his face on the side. <laughs> Or like him, I'd see him like really staring at the glass, sort of thing on the label of the bottle. Mm -hmm. So all pensive and super serious about it. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he's very he's contemplating it, right? <laughs> Before he, I don't know. You know, there's something else in that wine, though. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> little 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 nicotine. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> He's pro smoking, okay? <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. He is. <laughs> what other sort of marketing ideas you got for that besides cheese? Marketing ideas? You know, you you market in other other forms. Oh, you mean like merchandise? Yeah, merchandise marketing. Same thing to me. Okay. Well, uh, I've had it in mind forever to do a plush. Of which? So, well, I've actually had to uh, 
two plushes of Lay Mine made up already. So Really? Yeah, the first one, these weren't something to put into large distribution. The first one, um, I do not have any clue how to say the word, but it's uh, Japanese yarn doll making. Uh, no idea. Yeah, I, I don't even want to butcher it, but um, very talented crafter named Lady Lindsay made up a lay mime years ago uh, that um, I was actually interested in having her make up a few, but unfortunately the week she finished that was the same week that Ty passed, so I couldn't focus on anything. Everything went time. out the window. And then earlier this year, uh, actually I, I think I just got it last month, I saw this Kickstarter that was happening during the summertime that was to have these little felt dolls made that you could have them made, like, whatever character you wanted, right? And they kind of looked South Park style. <laughs> and so I backed that, and when it ended, it said that I wanted to lay mine made into one of these felt dolls. <laughs> and I think those were fantastic. But I would like to have a Muerte plush made, just as much as a lay mine plush. Oh, Muerte would work really well for a plush. Yeah, especially if you see the way she looks in the Valentine's Day image that was just released. Where she's a little Cupid behind Lay Mime. I'm not talking about with the wings, but the plushy sort of look that mm -hmm. she has. So uh, since I now know that Patrick can do that style, I'm thinking about maybe uh, asking him if he wants to do some prototypes of some plush dolls. And you can actually get plushes made pretty reasonably these days. Hmm. I never so, would have thought about how much they cost. Uh, they used to be really super expensive, but these days with all the advent of print-on-demand technologies and all that kind of stuff, you know. Oh, yeah, you can get almost anything made these days, I guess. Yeah. You can print your own stuff these days. Yeah, exactly. So I would love to do that. I would still like to do vinyl figures at some point of all my, of all my characters. I mean, having to build your own paper figures is a close second to me. <laughs> and I love the paper figures that I've been able to do and God I've done so many of those now <laughs> there's a bunch of those that haven't even been released yet speaking of which there's going to be a new one released this week for Ghost Assassin I'm going to release a Melissa paper doll this week oh nice I released Todd and David earlier this month and so now it's Melissa's turn to get released or maybe did I release yeah I released Todd so it's Melissa that still needs to be released uh I would like to do vinyl figures at some point, and I'm going to be doing another Chronicles glass this year. Ooh, what's that one going to be? This one is going to be Robert Von Helsing. It's going to uh, be, it's an image that Tony did for the back cover of Chronicles number one, uh, but uh, I had looked at it and I was like, oh, that would make a really good glass, I think. And so I talked pint to him about it. Pint glass or what? Yeah, I'm what doing another thinking? pint glass. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know um, what all I'm going to do in pint glass size. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep doing the Chronicles glasses like mm -hmm. that. I know that when Ghost Assassin Noir comes out, I'm eventually going to do a shot glass set for that. And yeah, there's so many glass styles to choose from. Oh, yeah. Too. And glass really is not that expensive to produce. It's really not. Yeah, the only thing that I'll get you is if you want it in like a week. Yeah, or if you want it, you know, there's different different things that can make it cost a lot more. Like if you want multi multiple colors on it, things like that. But, you know, if you're just wanting like a straight design in one color, you know, it's, it's not that expensive at all to do. It's a fraction of what it would cost you to put out a comic. So. Well, that's neat. New glass to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm planning on doing at least one of those this year. You have a set yet coming on for yeah. all of them. Well, I want to do at least six glasses for Chronicles von Helsing. And then I want to do at least four shot glass designs for Ghost Assassin Noir. Is one of them going to be blue? Possibly. Possibly. I could definitely see doing something like that. Well, with shot glasses, they have, uh, you can get the option of having like the ceramic that uh, instead of it being printed on it, it's like this wrap that goes around it. So that oh, you can, yeah. it's more like a sticker, but it doesn't really look like one. And that's how a lot of the, uh, the licensed shot glasses are like the call of duty shot glasses were wrapped like that. Yeah. I think I have a shot glass that's wrapped like that. And you, you don't really tell. 
No. That it's like that. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I'm going to be doing that stuff. That'll be neat. Mm-hmm. I like the one that I already have. Yeah, I love it. I drink out of that one all the time. <laughs> it's cool. That design was And I like perfect. the doors that it's opened up for getting my property seen in areas that they wouldn't normally be seen, like bars and liquor stores, for instance. Yeah, you wouldn't think about a comic entering into there. Nope. I don't think most of them ever try. So. Well, it's just not something you think. You know how to right? transferring to there? <laughs> I didn't think about it. You know that. I'm not the one who got it in there. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> That'll be cool. And then another one to push into there. Mm-hmm. You can do your your own Jaeger bomb with your glass and your shot glass. <laughs> Jaeger bomb is that when you drop it into something? Yeah, that's what the kids drink these days. I guess oh, you can okay. go with like a. They don't drop boil- Jaeger into beer, do they? Boiler maker. Or Irish I know what a boiler bomb. maker is. Okay. Any one of those. Take yeah. your pick, I guess, depending on what you want. But by Jaeger bomb, do you mean like they're dropping Jaeger into beer? No. Oh, okay. Okay. You drop God. it into Red Bull or Oh, Rockstar. that still sounds nasty. Ugh. Yeah, you're supposed to drop it in and then like chug your drink. Ah, oh, no thanks. They taste pretty awful because Jaeger's pretty awful. I like Jaeger, but I'm you're not going to be awful. I'm not going to be dumping my Jaeger into Red Bull. I've drank an energy drink once and it had a severely bad effect on me. I didn't I didn't sleep for like 32 hours. <laughs> Caffeine sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was uh, going to visit Ty and I had my friend Shannon with me, right? Her grandma lived a couple hours away from where Ty did. So I dropped her off and I'm heading Ty's way and I'm just like feeling myself fade, right? There's no rest stops anywhere on this long stretch in Idaho. For some reason, Idaho doesn't have nearly as many rest stops as Washington and Oregon do. But uh, I'm just uh, completely feeling like I'm going to fall asleep, right? I look down and I see, oh, she left her Viso or whatever energy drink it was, right? I had no idea that those things had the equivalent of 10 cups of coffee worth of caffeine. (laughs) I don't think it's quite that much caffeine. I go to take a drink of it and it's just like, oh, so foul, so nasty. But I'm like, ah, you know, it's caffeine. I got to stay awake. So I just chug the whole thing. And then it's like, you know, the squirrel at the end of uh, Over the Hedge? Didn't see it. Okay, because that's how I felt. I'm just like, ah! (laughs) All twitchy and shit. Yeah, it's like all of a sudden you can feel your heart just beating super hard. (laughs) Gnarly. Right? (laughs) And I'm like hyper aware of everything around me. Like, oh, there's a hummingbird 10 feet above my car. <laughs> well, I look forward to another glass. Yeah, I think it'll be great. I can't wait to have another one. I'm not even entirely sure what design you're going with. Oh, I'll show you. I'll show you. But it'll be cool. Yeah. The last one was awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, Tony's artwork is awesome. They, his, that was made perfect for that glass. transfers super well to glass. And, you know, so... Maybe you can get him to do an original glass-only piece. At some point, I would like to. Possibly dealing with what Volume 2 is going to deal with. But I don't want to drop that just yet. Ooh. <laughs> Give him a teaser. Give him a teaser, yep. <laughs> That's what they like. Keeps them coming I've back. actually had the whole idea of what Volume 2 is in mind longer than what I've known what Volume 1 was. So. Yeah, I, I feel like all you have... All these ideas of what everything is going to be. <laughs> like yeah. 10 years down the road. Yeah, I do. Pretty basically. <laughs> it's a lot of thinking. Yes, it is. Too much for me. <laughs> That's what keeps me up at night. <laughs> I'm barely 10 days down the road. Hmm. That must suck. No, nah, when you can't see in front of you, you don't really pay attention to it. <laughs> don't you trip going down that road, though? Now I pick up my feet. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, if I'm only able to work on every single story I have written, then (laughs) there'll be a whole lot. Let's just put it that way. All right, one last push for Ghost Assassin then? Yep, this is the last podcast uh, that will be airing prior to the Ghost Assassin Kickstarter ending. So if you haven't checked it out yet, please head over to www.ghostassassin.net. Once again, 
www.ghostassassin.net to view Ghost Assassin on Kickstarter. Thank you very much to everyone who has backed that. If you're incapable of backing, but you still really like the idea of the project and want to see it succeed, please consider sharing it on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, any of those sites. Whatever you got. Every share can definitely bring it one step closer to funding. You can find us on Facebook. We have fan pages for Dark Slinger Comics, Ghost Assassin, Chronicles of Von Helsing, and El Bovine Muerte. Google Plus, Tumblr. On Tumblr, we have Tumbles. No, that's not right, is Tumbles? it? Tumbles? <laughs> I don't know what they're called. <laughs> no, is that what your posts on t- Tumblr are called? <laughs> I don't know. It, I mean, on Tumblr, we have, funny, we have Tumblrs. I think they're actually called Tumblrs. Tumbles is better. Tumbles is better. <laughs> For Dark Slinger Comics and Elbow Vine Muerte. Check out all our tumbles. YouTube. YouTube channel is Dark Slinger Zero Com. On Twitter, Dark Slinger Comics. And I just started a Twitter for my personal account, which is Adam Watson. Uh, and on Instagram, under Dark Slinger Comics. So many places to be found. So many places. You can also find me on LinkedIn if you want. Another one to the list. <laughs> so we'll be back next Monday with another show. I'm Adam Watson. I'm Robert Diaz. Thank you for listening.